Hello there and welcome back. Today we talk about Bored Brain Exelon, the new system that I finally finished and how with all of this I can go back to my humble origin of my sort of dubby, down-tempo, 303 bass kind of sound. I struggle a lot to find the perfect setup to allow me to just have fun and one of the tools that if you know me, I really care about is the mixer. In fact, I have many of them. I own a beautiful console that is in my other studio, the Zell AM1, that is of course huge and beautiful and amazing, but not usable for live, unless you are Niels from. Then I have a Play, different model, play Differently Model 1, which is great, but also pretty big. And I wanted to bring in a modular field, the same kind of uh, experience that I have with those tools. So when I see that Bored Brain um, built the Exelon, which actually seems like a platform because this is, of course, the uh, mixing board, but then you can buy expander, you can buy output modules, and I feel that little by little I will build my dream mixer. Uh, I just wanted to try and they sent me one unit and I'm so thankful I'm so happy to have it because it's big and I love it. A lot of people um, go in the weird direction to me of cramping everything in small module uh, while I really enjoy when modules have playability. This one is big enough for my big hands to actually perform. So of course if you need a utility mixer, something that put together the uh, signals, then maybe this could be a little too big for your case. But if you want to perform, if you want to touch your sound, well, this is really, really good. And uh, of course, we will talk about that. We will talk how everything works together. Also, shoot out to Morph Modular. This is the case that they send me is a foldable case. Uh, it's 84. This can go in airplanes and it's pretty great. Um, my plan for the future is actually use half of it as dream mixer. Well, I will have the Bored Brain, all the effects that you see here, Magneto, Starlab, Mojave and Data Bender, and then a few other utilities. And I can just use half of it as a 
mix it with anything else because the great things of the Bored Brain Exelon is that you can bring in stuff from the outside world. And in this case, I'm using my uh, Avalon 303 the abstract instrument Avalon, that goes directly inside here and having the gain here that allows you to pump 15 dB, I don't remember precisely, but that's what it does. So I can bring a non-modular level into the modular level. Uh, and that's it. Let's, let's before going on, let's before going on what happened in here, the speech I do all the time, how you can support this page and please, I always need your support. Please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and it's free. Then you can buy from the affiliate link down below. You spend exactly the same, but I get a tiny percentage. It really helps. And the final way, which is the way that in the future will become way more important for me is the Patreon. In fact, I decided, uh, this is a little uh, future project, to um, work more on YouTube just for music and performances and then I will move little by little all of my uh, tutorial and stuff on Patreon. Uh, also in Patreon I reply to all of your questions, one-on-one, -on -one. there's tons of exclusive content. So if you want to support me, that's the best way to do it. All right, let's take a look of what happened here. So everything is sequenced by the Oxy as usual. I have on track four a multi-track which goes via MIDI into the Locutus, which is a MIDI uh, breakout for the Rossum uh, Assimilator. Assimilator is a great um, um, sampler, sample player. You can load eight samples at a time. At this moment, I have just five that goes then out in the Exelon. And I wanted the mixer mostly to use with the Assimilator. Assimilator needs sometime, so, some sort of mixing, I feel. It can go out left and right, but it has all the different outputs. It can be super complex, it can do amazing stuff. And using it with MIDI means that I don't have to patch anything here, but control everything from the Oxy. It's amazing. So from the simulator, I go for the, with this sixth channel into the three first channel of the Bored Brain. I'll explain you after a while. Let's go first on the uh, setup. Then I have on track four, the uh, Avalon coming in and it's here just with a cable pumping some gain. Then on track five, I have the Mavis from Moog. A simple but amazing module. I really like the Mavis. And on track six, of course, I have my dub style delay. The so it's the return of the Magneto, which sounds amazing through this setup. What happened in the mixer? In the mixer, we have for each channel, the fader, two effects send, which is mandatory for me. I need two for live performance, not one, not three, two. And I need to be able to use them together. So effects one, which is the farther away, so I use it less and I set up and forget about it, is the star lab. So the reverb, it goes through here. The effects send goes inside the star lab and then the star lab come back into the return one. So here, so I can just with this move it. Uh, then effects two is my delay. So it goes through send two into the magneto. From the magneto, it come back into its own channel. So here in channel six. This is because I like to use these to uh, dose the quantity of uh, delay I want. Plus, I can do the self-feedback thing, which is the basic of dub delay, right? Uh, mostly that's it, except I use the possibility of routing signal in a smart way. So the Exelon at the moment only has uh, two pair of outputs, main A and main B, which is made very well because you can decide where your channel goes, both A and B or just A or just B, which is amazing for what I'm doing. So I'm sending with main A into the data bander because I like to have the data bander after my mix so I can do all the weird 
uh, stuff, we will listen to that. And then from the data bender into the Strymon AA1, which is just an output module that put the level back to, uh, lower the level back to the line level. You need it, otherwise if you go out directly in your uh, mixer, you might have to uh, dump the signal, otherwise it's too strong, too hot. Then the mix output B, it goes inside the Mojave because I wanted to have the Mojave to listen whatever I want to it, do its granular thing, and then instead of coming back into any uh, channel, it goes back in return to. So I can decide to bring in all the uh, Mojave uh, granular stuff with this knob. I, of course, put Mojave full wet, and then I have at this point uh, a lot of possibility to create texture, ambient stuff, because with return one, actually, why don't we listen to something? Let's just easily bring the, a simple bass line from the um, trio trim. Okay. Now there's nothing, there's just the uh, sound of it. F first, you can set up the uh, gain. As a good practice, you should have the peak. There's a peak meter here that should be light only of uh, your highest transient, but for now I'm fine like this. On the input section here, let's say for you have the input left and right. If you put it on left, it's normalized, so it could be used as mono or dual mono, I'll show you with the drum part. Then you have a volume, and that is simply a VCA. Uh, you can send, uh, for example, a, uh, let's pick this. I'm sending from the Mimetic Digitalis that is clocked a, a CV. And now, let's, now this CV will control, as you can hear, the volume. To, to hear it better, maybe let's do it with the IntelliJ. For example, now I, it's at zero, and I can control the volume, so sending CV, which is great. Then you have balance, and with balance you can move the pan left and right. So you can start patching things and make things happen. And then you have also the FX1 and FX2 uh, CV control. So I can decide to send it using modulation, which is great. So you can modulate everything. Okay, let's start bring in the uh, stuff, the fun stuff. So first, let's send this to the reverb, startup. So right now goes through send one, goes inside here, I can see that the sound coming in, I can push it and distort it. Of course, it's all wet, there's no dry signal coming in, and now let's bring in, using the return, one. And here it is, I love, I love, love Starlab. It's not your um, bread and butter reverb, but it's just so interesting what it does. So, first step, and the sounds start getting interesting. I have very easy access here with this two knobs. It's very well laid because there's no cabling, so super easy for me to bring it in and out. But let's bring the delay now. Ah, first let's send it. We are already in heaven here. Let's bring some... Let's first talk about how I set up the drum, because that's another very cool thing of this guy. The drum come like this. The first two track here 
are a bus drum that are heavy filtered in the Morpheus and a clave. Now, if you go directly as a stereo input, it will separate one left, one right. Okay, but if you want to use them on the same channel, you can use the crossfade, X fade here. And now the balance, instead of setting the balance left and right, it balance how much of the signal you have. So now I only have the bass drum. Now I have only the clave, but it's centered in the field. If I put it in the middle, you basically have two channels in one, which is great. You can adjust. You can adjust your gain and even in this case, send it to the uh, delay. We already have something very moody and nice. Let's bring back the bass line. Now, you also have a very handy mute control that kills your sound, which is great. And now, the cool things on how I root the Mojave. So I had this other output, main output, so I send the entire mix into the Mojave, which is clocked. Everything is clocked by Pamela. Set it to the uh, full wet and let it do its thing. So he's listening to the full mix and it come back in return to here. So whenever I want to add some sparkle to the mix, here it is. Now I have also the Mojave. So with this setup, I can bring everything in and I have enough room to play with all the effects that I love. At the end, I also have Data Bender, if I want to add even more glitchiness. Not bad, huh? And then, I have on track three my uh, kick, so whenever I want. Here it is. Now I want to get into how I sequence everything, that's for another uh, video, because with the Oxy I can use a multi-track and now I have, these are all the different channel of the simulator and I can use velocity, I can use gate, all via MIDI. And then MIDI goes into the Avalon to control everything. And now it's just like, just creating some vibe. Uh, things that I like to do, for example, I can use a, uh, LFO, the Batumi, and I can decide to send the delay into itself. Move things away, uh, around. I can decide to add another thing here. Send the delay to the reverb. So on and on and on. The idea of this setup is having preset on the assimilator that will do like most of the dub, drum, and also stab and chord, and then uh, one instrument from the outside world, two or three or whatever it is. And for now, there's the Mavis. Maybe in the future I will change, but I like it. I like how it sounds. Also, I like that I can transpose very easily. What else we can say about the Exelon? I forgot to mention one important thing, one very important thing. I'm using, how am I using the uh, A and B uh, sliders here? Because all 
the stuff that I want to send uh, to the Mojave has to go also on the B uh, mix. So I don't want the kick going to the Mojave, so I set it just to A. Means that the kick will go just through this output and on my, sys on my sound card. This other goes both to A and B. So to the system and to the Mojave that then come back. And I can decide at any given point to remove from what the Mojave listen, just setting A. Or I can send just one instrument. Maybe I want the Mojave to listen only to the Mavis. So I'll set the Mavis going just to B. So now Mavis won't come out on the main system, but what will listen is the Mojave processed, the, the Mavis processed by Mojave. This is great. So a lot of versatility. Yes, it comes with the price of a big module, but I think what really is blowing my mind is the fact that in a small footprint in the end, I can build my dream mixing console, portable mixing console, which will be made eventually by the Bored Brain Exelon. I can wait when, uh, for them to release the direct output so I can record everything separately because that is something that will happen in the future. Maybe I will get the expansion port that give me three more, I think three more uh, stereo channels, so I have a lot. And then I will have the lower part of this case, just the mixer. On the top part, I will have just the effects and maybe some modulation. And with that, you can use these for everything, since these accept also line level. Uh, I can imagine to have that bringing in any session and any live performance and have my favorite effects with the uh, conveniency of the modular CV uh, modulation, so you can do very interesting stuff but in a small footprint. In the end it will be smaller than my Model 1, smaller than a lot of other mixer. What could you desire more? Maybe the only thing that uh, I had on the Model 1 that I miss is the filtering section. You can put a filter after it, which I might do because I want to filter everything. So it could go data bender and a filter, um, a stereo filter, or would be great, of course, to have a filter per channel. But in the modular world, of course, doesn't really make sense because each one likes to use its own filter and usually you go into this stuff with some tool that you can filter already. So, I can survive. And I think it sounds great, it's super easy to use, straight to the point, and yeah, cool to watch at it. All right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Bored Brain to send this one. Thanks to Mass Distro that helped me to get all of this cool instrument. Thanks to Morph Modular to send this amazing case. And guys, this is crazy. You can fold it. Uh, keep patched, go in an airplane, whatever, and perform. Also, as the best, best um, power that I ever experienced so far. All the other cases give me noise. Eh? This one is clean, clean, clean. And that's it. I'll see you next week. Ciao.